Those aren't monsters. You see? Uh -huh. They're the same things in the dark as they are in the light. <laughs> Your imagination got the best of you, George. But you know what? I have something to make you feel better. Your own personal nightlight. Now you'll never be afraid in the dark. <laughs> All right, good night, George. Bad news, George. The storm knocked the power out. Aww. Hey, don't worry. We won't be in the dark. I have got my trusty Spelunker Scout's flashlight. <laughs> wow, that's funny. I always keep it right here. Uh -oh. I know how to handle this old storm. It'll be fun, just like camping out. Right, George? <laughs> Camping out in the living room would have been fun. If George had been able to fall asleep. No, well, still no electricity, George. Huh? Yep, yeah, that last big storm knocked it out for four whole days. But don't worry, I know my flashlight is around here somewhere. George knew he had to get that flashlight back if he wanted to sleep tonight. But the thought of going back to that cave alone was too scary. <laughs> oh, you want those leftover walnuts? Well, help yourself. George had led Jumpy to the cave. Now he had to get the squirrel to follow him inside. Huh? That was easier than he expected. was right. The only scary things in the dark were in George's imagination. I didn't frighten you, did I, George? <laughs> oh, couldn't make it home before the rain, so I came in here. Oh, and I found this. Want it? <laughs> <laughs> I've been exploring this cave since I was a boy. Come on, I'll show you around. That night, the power was restored. But George almost wished it was still out. And so, after a day of spooky shadows and strange shapes and sounds, George found that he never felt so at home as he did right then in the dark.
little monkeys sure can't take up a lot of space. Especially when they have a lot of stuff. Well, that's the last of it, George. D George? <laughs> now, George, are you sure we can't give this all away instead of storing it in the basement? <sighs> You'll never use any of this stuff again. <laughs> the way George saw it, you should save everything because you never know when you might need it. <sighs> okay, let's take it downstairs. There's nothing Hundley loved more than a clean lobby. He only wished that monkey felt the same way. Oh, sorry about that, Hundley. Is that all of it? It's not even half of it. Ah, 301's doorbell is stuck again. Don't worry, Hundley will show you to the basement. Great. George, I'll go upstairs for more boxes. Why don't you and Hundley find a spot for them? <laughs> don't go down empty-handed. Hundley decided to find a place for George's stuff. <laughs> it occurred to Hundley that this was the first time he'd been in the basement by himself. <laughs> now where did that ball go? A good lobby dog is fearless. What are you guys waiting for? Why aren't you bringing the boxes downstairs? <laughs> well, I'll go upstairs and get more boxes. <laughs> George knew something in that basement must have scared Hundley, but he wondered what. Hundley couldn't let George go into that basement all by himself. He was a lobby dog, and this was his job. There was nothing to be afraid of. A basement is just a room full of junk. There was nothing to be afraid of down here. Except for that creepy noise. George? Are you two all right? <laughs> Calm down. Something in that basement must be frightening them. Let's all go down together and see what it is. Well, I have to wait for the doorbell repair man. Oh. Huntley wished he could wait for the doorbell repair man. 
Saturdays were the best day to stand on the dock and watch boats. There were tugboats, motorboats, and dachshunds, and dachshunds. Hey, it's Hundley. Hundley loved everything about sailing. How the sails sounded when they caught the wind. How the doorman used the wind and the sails to make the boat go faster. And how there was all that water between their boat and the nearest sloppy monkey. Hey, I never knew you guys sailed. Sure. Hunley likes sailing so much, I put a boat in his dish. <laughs> now drinking water reminds him of sailing, which makes him happy. If you want to see some great sailing ships, watch Pirates of the Wybicus tonight. Any show about sailing ships sounded good to Hunley. It's so good, the first time I saw it, I wished I was a pirate. Since this was a sailboat, George wanted to be the wind and make it go. Let's go, George. Natural Geometric Exploring presents Pirates of the Wybicus. Wow. How'd you like to sail a ship like that, Hundley? <laughs> Now there was a ship that couldn't be sunk by monkey breath. The SS Wybicus was attacked by the bold pirate Black Hat Vesame. Pirate vessel off the port bow. All hands to your stations. Whole wind, coxswain. Oh. <laughs> oh. Those ships were so dignified and neat. Wouldn't it be great to be an old time captain? <laughs> <laughs> the neatest ship to ever set sail was the SS Dignified. Its commander was world-renowned, Captain Hundley. No other captain was as smart, as orderly, or had as wet a nose. All's clear, Captain Hundley, sir. Thank you, sir. You know how much your approval means to me, sir. Captain Hundley's crew was always orderly and efficient. No one knew how to ride the breezes like Captain Hundley, the greatest sailor in the history of wind. But all was not smooth sailing. A new crewman came aboard during a stop in the dry Tortugas. New first mate George was a sloppy monkey with a jelly sandwich. Captain Hundley didn't worry. He put that monkey in the brig and kept his ship dignified. Nope, not in this log. George felt bad about waking Jumpy Squirrel, but he had to move on. Huh? 
then he got an idea. Possum had its uses. I got another call about the creature. This time, a stampeded cattle at Renkin's farm. <laughs> but let me reassure the kiddies that this is all in fun. The creature's only a legend. <laughs> I hope. George remembered that the possum liked fish sandwiches. So maybe it lived in water, like beavers. <laughs> Raccoons must be nocturnal, too. But his possum showed no interest in living in water. Unless he lived in a boat. Maybe this possum's family lived in town. George held him high so he could help look. <laughs> Folks, remember, the lake creature is just a fisherman's legend. He doesn't exist. He... <gasps> Except there he is. He must be 12 feet tall and as terrifying as a shark holding a harpoon. <laughs> It was getting later and later, but George still hadn't found the possum's home. He found more nocturnal creatures' homes. He found daytime creatures' homes, too. But he couldn't find the possum's home. He was so tired, he was imagining possums everywhere. Where was he? <laughs> the possum family lived in a tree. George, uh, kind of late for a stroll. This has been quite an evening. Uh, citizens report and night creatures. <laughs> George had seen night creatures too. Bill was right, there were a lot of them. But Bill was wrong about the town. Lock your doors. No telling where the creature will appear next. It wasn't at all quiet at night. Night, George. You sleep well. George would sleep well. And with the possum gone, he'd fill the feeder and wake to chirping birds. Morning, George. Time to get up. What? George? Oh. oh. George learned one more thing about nocturnal creatures. Little animals that stay awake at night sleep during the day. <laughs> 